Hey y'all, it's Sarah, and I have got an Easter-type craft for you guys today. I'm going to be trying to zoom through this the best I can. I am in Texas. I don't know how long we'll have power. We still don't have water, so I'm trying to get through painting with just some wet wipes and things like that to clean up after. So, I want to go ahead and jump in, get started. This is a really, really simple craft. I'm just wanting to bulk up the look of these cute pieces from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to bring you guys along with me. Keep in mind that you can always make these bigger, larger. I'm trying to get away with this as being a one full sheet craft. And then um, I'm going to be using, of course, some strips that I've pre-painted to go ahead and do my framing. So really quick, here's what I've got. I've got what I'm going to be calling my boy bunny and my girl bunny. I used a little bit of spackling to fill in their holes. I used the Waverly chalk paint in hazelnut on my boy bunny. Let me show you. I filled in his little holes with some spackling and then I just took a little bit of this. It was a perfect match to the distressing they already had on this bunny. I distressed over where I had my little holes and you can't even tell that they started out with holes. I did the same thing with the girl bunny, but she had just a little bit of a rosier tint to some of her distressing. So I added just the tiniest bit of some kind of red. This was what I had closest to me. I went ahead and did that, covered her little holes so they had time to dry so I could make this craft a little quicker. And I'm going to jump in, show you what I did. Obviously, the number one thing to most of my projects is some Ready Board brand foam core. Um, this video is being sponsored by Ready Board, and if you're not familiar with this, this is, um, turn it to the side there, this is like poster board. You find it in your school supply, office supply section of places like Dollar Tree, Walmart, Dollar General. It's usually a dollar or less a sheet. It comes in 20 by 30, and I'm going to be using this full sheet. I'm going to alter it a little bit and show you how I'm going to do that. So let's pull these things to the side. So I'm going to be making mine in a shiplap look. In order to do that, I am going to be using my handy dandy V-Groove tool. This thing is the XTC 2001. Uh, if you have not seen the videos about this, there is a cool tools video that I will try to link below to show you more about this tool. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I'm going to show you really quick what this does because I cheated and went ahead and did a full sheet of foam core with this. But I have got the Logan Compact Matte Cutter. This is the model 301M. They have newer models. This is also in the Cool Tools video. All I have done is I went through and I made marks at two inches because this thing hits on the track at a little bit different spot than your regular blade. So you have to have it marked so that you can get the alignment a little better. So I come in. I got it lined up with every two inches. You could do this any spacing you wanted on your little slats. I went with a more narrow two inch. If you don't have these tools, nobody is required to have these tools. You could absolutely do this by just cutting a bunch of white strips and stacking them on a backer piece and getting that similar ship lap look. So in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing lined up. This has a track system. It has a notch system that allows these V-shaped notches to go into it. You want to stay fairly low on this. Um, I usually stay here. I think you guys maybe can see those measurements. I usually stay between the three and the five. That way it doesn't go super deep. Just enough to kind of give me my spot. One of the things I will recommend is bump like just a scrap piece down here at the end just to help keep your hand from kind of um, tilting off when you're sliding across and you won't end up with your end sections looking a little wonky on you and this is what i mean i've just got like a little scrap piece here that will help me keep kind of my hand from shifting i'm going to align with this little triangular notch right there that's the center port part pop it on its track I'm going to push down on this blade right here at the beginning and just slide this all the way down. And you guys, I 
am almost due for new blades on this thing. So disregard how poorly it's working. I cannot get to the stores right now to get a new blade. But I wanted to show you that this is how I got my piece. Although it doesn't look like I did it that way. It's kind of a mess at the moment with um, worn down blades. But let's see. Maybe I can do a little better. You can kind of see, like I said, the issue with mine is the fact that I have used it a lot um, and the blades are worn down, but I'm not going to get out and travel any more than I have to in this weather. But that's kind of the gist of it. I did an entire full sheet. I will recommend go along lengthwise. Part of what you're seeing right here is the fact that this is actually um, not lengthwise. I'm actually going against the ripple. If you can see how this thing is rippled if you go along with the ripples when you're using a tool like this and even when you're cutting you get much better results where these drag marks are hitting is because i'm hitting across those rippled areas so keep that in mind when you're using these tools when you're cutting kind of work with the natural manufacturing of your foam core and it does work out better on your cuts i'm going to put this thing back together get it all out of the way and show you my finished one ta-da here's my finished one that i was able to do before my blades went kind of um south on me but you can see it just kind of notches into that while just keeping it one full sheet uh it, it pretty much keeps from damaging the integrity if you go too deep, it will kind of damage the integrity of your piece. So keep that in mind if you're going to play with that tool. Check out that video about those tools to get a lot more information on how they work and be able to have a little more success with them. But like I said, it's not necessary. You could absolutely just cut down individual strips in whatever width you wanted to and do those the same way that we do the faux wood grain ones. So now that I've got my one full sheet, and the reason I did it as one full sheet is because it just made it easier to go ahead and zoom across. Now I'm going to cut this thing down in half. And when I say I'm cutting it in half, I'm cutting it in half the long ways so that I'm going to basically get about a 15 by 20 inch end result. So I'm going to come in and measure off. And I'm going to tell you that sometimes your foam core sheet is not a perfect 100 percent true 30 inches it's like a 16th away so i'm actually butting it just a little away from that 15 inch mark that's not always the case sometimes i feel like they're a little bit closer um but if you've noticed when you go to measure it might be just a hair shy of that full 30 inches So all I'm doing, marking the whole thing, I'm gonna cut this in half and I'll have two pieces for two backers. All of mine is marked out really quick. I wanna show you, I get this question all the time. How do you get straight lines? You guys see, I do have the mat cutter. However, for me, I typically still stick with just my razor blade. Now, one of the game changers for me were these little Dollar Tree silicone finger guards. They do help me grab my razor blade a little better. Now, if you haven't noticed, I've got some of just the Dollar Tree little blue poster tap putty stuck to my ruler so it doesn't slide around on me. That's a big help right in itself. I'm using my bigger ruler because my other one is not long enough to hit this 20 inches. Got everything aligned up. I'm going to put pressure on my blade well before I touch the actual foam core. That way it doesn't crack and dig in right at this first part. And just like that, perfectly straight line, simple as that. I know a lot of people struggle and they get nervous with the razor blade. A little practice with that and a little more confidence with it. And I promise you, it starts to come a little more natural because I was terrified of the razor blades when I first started. It really did make me nervous. And now that's kind of my most confident tool in cutting these. So here's where I'm at. I've got two um, 15 by 20 inch pieces. The next step is going to be to frame these guys out. And actually, I'm going to keep my cutting mat here. That'll just make it easier. I want to show you guys really quick, just with one of these, how you're going to get your length. I'm going to miter mine. 
I know there's questions about mitering all the time. So in order to miter, you're not adding anything to your length. You're going to keep your length exactly within the length and width of your project. So when I cut this side, it's going to be cut at this 20 inches. When I cut this side, it's going to be cut at 15 inches. And then we miter those. So really quick in order to do that, I will show you. Let me grab my skinnier ruler. It's just easier for me to use. So I'm going completely flush with the length of this. Just like that. All you got to do. And you'll do that on every single side. Once you do that, to get your miters, I'm using a one inch strip. If you guys are wondering out how to get the paint look on this, those are always their own tutorials because they take a little more time and detail. Um, there is a lot of different color options available either on the channel or there are some that are independent to just the Facebook group for Peppermint Cactus. Really quick, I'm going to come in because I know this is one inch. I'm going to come over one inch. And my strips are painted front and back. They just happen to be. I'm using what I've got since I don't want to do a lot of painting without any water in the house. Now, I've come across, hit that diagonal. From corner to corner on a perfect square, you get a 45 degree cut. So, ta-da, that's my first miter. I'm going to do the very same thing on the other side. I'm going to come over, do my one inch. Now, the one thing that I am going to look at now is I want this pointy part. I want to keep on this side and my longest pointy part is going to be on this side. So, I want to come on that diagonal. You want your longest portion on one side of your strip and your shortest portion on the other side of your strip. And I'm having a hard time seeing on this painted surface where I've marked. Hopefully I've got it. There you go. Now you can see you want to keep it point to point here and short to short there. When you get ready to line these up, they should have a nice little 45 degree mitered edge. My next step now, because I cut these down from larger strips that I had pre-painted, I'm going to want to paint all of my edges now before I attach them down because it's much harder to get the paint on there. Once they're glued down, you don't want to get any paint on your white spots. Okay, so I have all of those done. I've done my edges. One other thing that I want to do because I am using this white is this is going to look a little scary and I'm trying to be super, super careful because I can't wash my hands right now like I normally would. I don't want to get fingerprints all over my white, but I want to go ahead now at this stage and put a little paint on my edges. You can do it afterwards, but a lot of times I feel like there still can be a little white showing through. So I go ahead and do it right on my edges. A little bit of it seeps over and that ends up kind of hiding any of the white that might peek through. And I'm going to show you what I mean. If I set this on here now with that little bit of seepage over the edge, you can kind of see there's no little gaps there. If I do it here where there's no seepage over the edge, even when I go to paint that, um, you can still have a little bit of this white from that part show through. Oh, this is what I'm trying to avoid, guys. I did not realize how many times a day I actually wash my hands until I cannot. I have a water bottle in here that I keep to wash my hands with. And that's having to do me at the moment with some wipes. So continue to go all the way around those pieces. Get that edge really good and covered. By the time you glue your frames down, you're going to have a piece that looks... Um, a little more finished. So I still ended up getting a few messy things on here and I'm hoping that my framework is going to cover most of that but I wanted to show you the wonders of this Dollar Tree um, rubber eraser. Now typically you use this for adhesive removal and it works really great for that but on your foam core it works really great also if you get smudges, if you get um, kind of some oily fingerprints 
it is not going to remove all of it, but it can remove some if you work quickly. And you can see this is actual paint. I may not be able to remove all of it, but it will lighten it up without ripping my paper surface, which is really handy in situations like this where you can't wash your hands. So hopefully I can cover this up. If not, I'm going to have to find a better fix. But either which way, I'm still going to show you how to finish this craft. We're going to work through it. That is what we have been doing all week, working through things. It does look like it's going to be kind of a mess for me, but I'm going to do my best. And these things actually do work for most of your liquid adhesives. They work for hot glue too, if you can catch it fast enough while it's still kind of damp and tacky. Um, so know that is very, very handy to have on hand. I've seen people ask if it's worth the investment to spend that dollar. It absolutely is. I've used those for years, but I used to pay a much pricier price. So the next thing I'm going to do, come in, do my frame. I'm going to get my first one pinned down in place, and then I'm going to kind of dry fit the rest of them just to make sure my cuts are good. And if they're not, I can fix them before it gets too late in the game. So first one's in. I'm going to try to be careful because there's still paint on some of these. So far, looking good, looking good. I have been itching to do some kind of crafting. Even if it's a craft fail at this point, I will take it. So I feel like this one's actually going to lay out pretty nicely, it's looking like. So I can go ahead and start gluing these down and then hopefully maybe fix my little smudges here. I'm just using cheap Dollar Tree glue, but I want to tell you guys, if you're having glue fails where it's dripping a whole lot on you, I have discovered recently that that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with your glue gun. I was comparing some glue guns, and it has more to do with your glue sticks, the quality of your glue sticks. Dollar Tree glue sticks do drip a whole lot more than a more quality glue stick, but... I'm still sticking by my Dollar Tree glue sticks for now. So, most of my smudges look like they're getting covered up fairly okay. Not going to be too upset about it. I'm working in interesting circumstances. And you're going to do this to both pieces. I'm sure you can kind of see where we're going with this. We're just going to pop our little finished bunnies on top of this guy. And instead of just being those flat little hanging bunnies, they'll actually be something with a little substance to it. So, I'm starting with my girl bunny here. Look how cute she is. You could add bows to this. You could, you could frou-frou this up really all you wanted to. I'm not going to go overly anything with it just yet. Um, I will say that my... my my little banner here on mine is fraying. I'm just going to bring in a little torch here and kind of be careful when you're doing that with things like burlap because you can light the whole thing on fire. We do not want that to happen. So I'm just going to eyeball kind of a center point. The cool thing is, is my lines really help me line this up. I am going to coat this sucker down. We are just going to get him and, and her all glued up so that I can get it stuck down flat. Let me reload my glue. And you can kind of see where this is going. We're pretty simple on this one, I feel like, but it's something I wanted to share. And if I didn't do a little bit crafting, I was gonna go stir crazy. I don't know if any of you are like that, but if I don't get a little time to express myself creatively, I get restless. And I can tell you I have been quite restless. I can only play in the snow so much. And I did play in the snow like a little kid. So I'm going to pop her in place. I'm going to kind of smush her around a little. Just kind of nudge her so my glue smears underneath there and really takes hold.
And there we go. I think she stuck down fairly decent. So you can see that makes a nice, decent sized piece. My edges look all nice and clean. I do have a little cleanup that I can go back in and do. All I've got to do is do my little boy bunny. And I've got a pretty good set of wall art that really beef these up. I love these pieces. I think they're cute just as they are, but I have big walls. Something like this just really doesn't stand out on my walls. But now putting them together as a collection, it'll definitely stand out. Okay, as you can see, I jumped ahead and went ahead and did my blue bunny. That way I didn't waste your time showing you kind of duplicate, duplicate process. But here's the full set. These are really large, guys. They're, they're pretty substantial, believe it or not. Um, you can kind of see here. Nice, good size pieces. Really brings these up a notch, I think. They're super cute. I loved them either way, but now I love them even more. I hope this gives you some ideas. I'm hoping to knock out a few other things that have been on my mind the last several days. And I hope you guys get a chance to do a little crafting. Maybe if you've got power and can get around to it. I hope you can. I hope you're staying warm and safe and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye y'all.